Hello everyone, Venger 1.9 is out now. In the last couple of releases, we started naming each minor release after a city or a town somewhere in the world. Our secret plan is that we want to just go and visit all these places and do our announcement videos. And I'm happy to say this starts with this release. This release 1.9 is named after the Alpine town of Kitzbühel. And I'm happy to say that David, my co-founder and CEO, is in Kitzbühel right now. And he's going to tell you all about this beautiful exclusive resort. Take it away, David. Hi guys, David here, CEO of Venja. And we are in Kitzbühel, where every year the famous ski race at the Hanenkam takes place. And because the new version is named after Kitzbühel, I'll, we thought let's introduce you to Kitzbühel. Some facts about Kitzbühel. The city is around 750 years old, so a pretty old city. Um, it's based basically in Tyrol, in the Alps, in basically the center and the heart of, of the Alps around 700 meters sea level. Yeah, I think that are the most important facts. Maybe some of you already know the city. If not, most celebrities like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jason Statham, and other famous people are visiting Kitzbühel every year for the ski race. Um, and it is also the location where the headquarter of Alpine 11 is based. And Alpine 11 is shareholder of Venger. And that's why we named Venger the new 1.9 version after Kitzbühel. Okay, okay, you probably figured out he didn't travel to Kitzbühel just to do this video. He lives there anyway, but it's a start. The next release is going to be Vienna, so I can do the intro to that one and we'll see where it goes from there. Anyway, let's get on with the release announcements. First of all, I want to talk about custom history entries. So in Venger, there's this concept of a history timeline for customers and for orders. It's basically a chronological timeline of important events relating to that customer or order. It looks like this. If I'm in an order record, you can see down here, there's a list. It starts from the bottom here and it comes forward in time and it shows these like significant events that have happened regarding this customer. Up until now, you've been limited to the kind of events that are provided out of the box by Avenger. With version 1.9, you can now define your own custom timeline events. Some examples of why you might want to do this are, let's say you've got a, a B2B uh, shop and you need to validate the tax IDs of your customers. So that can be a step that you perform and then when it's been validated you can record the details as a timeline entry for that customer record. Or if you've got a marketplace and you have to verify the seller, maybe you've got to like check their documents or something, you can also put that on their timeline for that customer record. And for the orders, let's say you've got a workflow where you give quotes to customers, another like B2B type of workflow, right? That's quite common. You can record the quote with all the details really relating to that quote in right there in the timeline. I'm going to show you an example of how this looks. So first of all, we'll define a new type for the customer history entry. We're going to just call it custom type for now. We extend this interface and we define the shape of the data that's going to be associated with this entry and we'll use it like this. I've got a little plugin here which adds a new mutation which is going to add an entry to a customer and we use the history service. This is provided from Venger Core and it's got a method create history entry for customer. Uh, we specify the type which is our custom type and then the data. And the nice thing is because we've extended that interface, this is now type safe. So if I type something wrong here, we get a TypeScript error. It has to be the correct data type. So let's try this out. So the query, the sorry, the mutation is add custom customer history entry. And we need to provide a we need to provide a customer ID and the name. Let's just jump back over to this record and we see this is customer ID one. So we'll try and add a, an item to this history here. So I'm going to call this mutation with the customer ID one and I'm going to say the name is tax ID verified just to give an example. So let's send that and let's go back over here and let's refresh the page and let's see if it worked. Okay. We see that we have a custom timeline entry here and the details with the uh, just an object of the data that we provided. And what's also possible is that we can actually provide custom UI components so we can decide how do we actually want to display this information for this timeline entry. And you can, you can define it in any way that you like. So there's an example here in our new documentation 
which shows, for example, this is how you might want to present the fact that the tax ID was verified for this particular customer. And there's a full example here of how the UI code looks to do that. And it's not very much code. Okay, next feature, the active order strategy. What's this all about? So when you're using the shop API in Venger and you use queries like active order or eligible shipping methods or mutations like add item to order or transition order to state, all of these things, uh, you don't actually have to specify what the order is that you want to operate on, right? It's, it's implicit. It's, um, it's just created when you create a new session and it's attached to that session. Avenger always gets the session. It looks up what's the active order and it just uses that. So you never have to specify the order. And for many cases, that's great. It's very convenient. You don't have to, um, you know, store IDs for order and pass them around to every single query mutation. It works well. But on the downside, it limits certain more complex workflows. I'll give you an example. In a B2B scenario, business to business, you might have a situation where one person is responsible for creating an order. Another person might log in and then be responsible for filling the order with items. And then a third person might be responsible for actually checking out and paying for it. So you want in this situation, you want many people to be able to access this same order and operate on the same order. This is just isn't going to work if that order is only attached to one session inside one browser or with one user account. It just doesn't work. Another example, let's say you want to have a separate active order on each channel in a multi-channel setup. Again, this is something that you just can't do right now. And this is what the active order strategy is intending to enable. It unlocks all kinds of more sophisticated ways of managing the active order. So you can, you can implement a whole new range of business use cases on top of Venger, which is pretty cool. I'm going to show you how that works. So here's our documentation on active order strategy. It's very comprehensive. And like all of our strategies in Venger, we use lots of strategies. Um, it implements um, injectable strategy interface. It has a bunch of methods that you can define. And it really gives you a lot of freedom on how you want your implementation to look like. I've got an example one here I want to show you. Let's make this bigger. Okay, so here's a scenario. This is a little bit like the one I explained when you have multiple people working on a single order. And we want to create a token that represents this order. And this token can be passed around in a link or, you know, in a, in a message. And they can share this, this one active order between different people. So the way this works is that we have this token. And we define it here in um, an input type. So when we define this input type, now it's going to add a new input to all of these shop operations. Like when you say the active order query, you now have to pass it an argument so you can supply the token. And then we have a method here, which takes that input and uses it to find the order and return the order. And there's an optional method, which is not implemented here, which is to create an active order. So for example, by default, we always create an active order whenever you add something to your cart. But in some cases, you might not want that to happen. So in our example here, we don't want that to happen. We want to have some explicit process to create an order. So we have defined in this little plugin here uh, a mutation that creates an order for a given customer ID. And it attaches a token to the custom field which is right here called order token. And that's later used to look up the order. Let's try it out. Okay, mutation, create order. And I need the customer ID. Let's give it customer ID one again. And it's gonna return an order. And we can check, I think, that it has a custom field with a token on it. Oh, the token's hidden, so we can't check that. Let's just get the ID. So we've created an order. Let's check the back end now. We'll look at orders, active. Right, we have this one right here. It's been order created. Good. And now in the shop API, if we were if we were to say write a query for the active order, and we want to get the ID, we'll see that it's null because we have to supply a token. So we get this new argument, active order input. We name our strategy and then we give the input argument. 
And let's find out what that token is. Okay, we've got a very simple token naming scheme. It's just token dash and then the customer ID. Not production ready, but it'll do for a demo. So it should be token dash one. Nope. It's not working because it has this little line here where it says I the active user ID needs to be the user who owns this order. So. I've got to log in first. So let's just comment that out and log in quickly. So we've logged in, we can delete that. And so now we should be able to get the active order. Okay, and that allows us to now get the active order. And just to make sure it's actually working, if I change this to a wrong token, we get nothing. So that's working right there. So for the next thing I wanna show you, I need to log out because we have refreshed our login screen. So now whenever you or any of your users log into Venger, you're greeted with some beautiful curated photography. And if you don't like the photography, you can supply your own. It's very simple and I'll show you how it's done in your admin UI config. We need to specify the login image URL and this takes a string so we can grab the URL I prepared earlier. And let's restart that now. Okay, server's restarted now, let's refresh. Ah, beautiful. Keeping up with the theme is Kitzbühel and the beautiful Tyrolean Alps. Now this is actually just the first step in a project we've got for version two, where we're going to refresh the entire admin UI. The project has already begun, it's very exciting. We're working with some partners on new designs right now. Nothing I can show yet, but hopefully I'll be able to share some mockups and designs soon. Watch this space. And that kind of leads us nicely into the next topic I wanna to talk about to finish this video, which is where do we go from here, version 1.9. Let's look at the roadmap. This is where we are right now. And next is the big one, version 2.0. That's right, there is no more planned minor release between now and version two Avenger. Version two, if you've been checking out the roadmap and following progress, is gonna be a pretty big release. There are a bunch of major big improvements that are coming. And what's really exciting for me is that now the version one branch um, minor releases are done. There's no more features that we need to develop for version one. I'm really gonna shift focus and start working and getting stuck into some of these very meaty challenges that come with version two, like the, um, the marketplace support, the multiple stock locations, the refreshed UI, um, better inventory management, all sorts of stuff. Just check out our roadmap. We have the, um, the kind of high level uh, roadmap for decision makers right here. We also have the GitHub roadmap, which is more technical. It actually goes into the details of the issues, which you can see here. And there are a lot of issues planned, as you can see. This is a long list that now I have to get stuck into. But anyway, it's very exciting. 2.0 is coming early next year. So go and check out the blog post for more details of what's in this release. I didn't cover everything. There is more down there. Um, thank you to all the contributors again. Our community is fantastic. It's always growing and it's really a joy to uh, work with you all day to day and to chat with you on Slack and um, and to, to answer your questions and to, to, to learn from you. So I with that, I wish you uh, a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and uh, we'll see you in the new year with version 2.0. This is exciting. Okay, bye-bye.